This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today is a very special video uh, and topic. It is the end of the year. It's the end of a year. It's the end of 2020, you guys. And the topic is the top 10 perfumes of 2020. That's a big one. That's a big one to, <laughs> to tackle. And it's a really big one to dive into and to reason about and throughout. So let's get to it. Of course, before we get to it, I would like to thank you all for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, but wish to please consider subscribing to my channel and pushing the notifications button. I repeat this often, but only 8% of you who are already anyway watching my channel are also subscribed to my channel. Only 8%. Uh, if 20% were subscribed that are anyway watching, we would be over 100,000 subscribers by now. So consider that. And also, if you want to help out the channel grow uh, technically, uh, you could consider becoming a member as well as joining me on Patreon. Super Dick, well spelled together. Thank you so much to my members who have already pledged and to the patrons. All right, let's get to the video. This is uh, one heck of a video, you guys. Um, let me get my list out because this, let me tell you. Mm. All right. I think I'm going to bring them up. They're not going to be in any particular order, meaning I'm not going to tell you, oh, this is my favorite one. This is my least favorite. No, because this list, unlike any other list that you're, you're going to see on YouTube, is not... Um, it's not just about, oh, I love these 10 perfumes. No, th there's a specific reason behind each and every one of them. Not all of them are positive reasons, but still, still these perfumes have made it into this weird top 10 for whatever reason they are in the top 10 for their own reason. Oh, you're gonna see it's all a mess, but it's not a mess. Once you have the visual in front of you, you're totally gonna get the picture. Um, right, so and now, Let's begin with the most expensive and intense fragrance for the price that I have uh, purchased in 2020 and that has consolidated itself as, as one of the top 10. And, and, and I did buy this one in 2020 and uh, it is Carnal Flower by Dominique Ropion, uh, the most tuberose of all tuberoses. This is the perfume. It's incredible and it is the most intense fragrance that I own. In this particular concentration, uh, Eau de Parfum, which is like a pure perfume, and this particular batch, they vary quite a bit from batch to batch because of all the flowers in them. A291906-7. That's the batch code. So this one enters the top 10 as the most expensive purchase of 2020. And it is also the most, what did I write here? Most intense. I love it so much. I mean, I'm so happy. It took me like, I don't know, seven years thinking about it. And I I went for it in 2020 because I'm home a lot. And I had the, this opportunity to really experience it. Because I'm at home, I'm not traveling this year i'm not going out so this one cannot kill people around me because it's so strong so i got a chance to really play with it at home and realize how it works for me and literally guys how it works for me one spray and i smell it for two days this particular batch code so i'm so happy that i got this batch code and but anyway i use it often but look how little is used up and i really use it often and uh but just one spray right here on the chest and it's good for days wonderful but it was the most expensive but then if i recalculate how long it's going to last and how intense it is it was it was worth every penny but 100 mil for like 280 bucks or something that's that's a lot this was the most expensive one i got this year Alrighty, now that was number one let's tick it off so i don't Right, okay, now we're going to number two. Um, where is it? Here it is. Number two, and why is my reason for this one? This, yeah, 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 
this is an interesting one. Number two is number 22. <laughs> Chanel number 22 is my number two, and I have it here. I prepared it in both concentrations. Uh, one of the first 200 milliliter bottle editions. Look how dark it turned. Look how gorgeously ambery the juice has turned. And this is the Eau de Parfum. This one is about a year or two old. And I also have the Pure Perfume, just not here set up right now. I, I love it to bits. And number 22 in 2020, maybe this one should also be, it's going to have its 100th birthday in 2022, because as the number says, it was released in 1922. But uh, it's one of my favorites this year for the giving. So you see, the first one was about taking, money, expensive. This one is giving. This is the most giving of Chanel perfumes. Of all the Chanel perfumes, number 22 is the most altruistic. It's the most, it's the least arrogant. You know, Chanel perfumes have that snobby, detached allure about them, which is gorgeous, but it's snobby in a way. Not 22. 22 is friendly. 22 has all the elegance of a Chanel, but it gives it to you with open arms. And it's such a comforting scent in this year when a lot of us feel very alone and isolated and um, in peril, uh, the world menacing around us. Number 22 is the Chanel perfume that gives you an embrace. It gives you a hug. It's, it's cool and warm at the same time. It lulls you to sleep at night. It, it hugs you early in the morning if you spray it for the first thing when you do when you wake up. So this one has been helping me personally, psychologically, a lot. So it was the most giving in terms of psychology and friendliness Chanel perfume and that's why this one is um, in my top 10 for 2020. All right, um, let's cross that off the list. My pen isn't working, obviously. The next one is the strangest perfume of 2020. This, this one is as conceptual as any perfume ever got. I, uh, for me, for the perfumes that I've smelled in my life, nothing is nothing beats this in terms of conceptuality, and that is Comme des Garçons tape. Now, I know they only call it Comme des Garçons. That's actually, it's just called Comme des Garçons. It came out around 2011. Um, but it, since it lists in its notes, well, it's all based around Hawthorne. The Hawthorne flower is the heart of this perfume. But... Its synthetical composition around it makes it smell of synthetic glue and scotch tape and cardboard. Cardboard, slightly humid cardboard that has peeling off scotch tape or industrial glue that's stuck to cardboard. Or it also smells like an office supply center when you open kind of a drawer full of office supplies. And there's that mix of different chemicals coming out at you. I've done a review of this one. You could check it out on my album. I'm going to post a link to all the perfumes listed. Well, for the ones that I have reviewed, I will post a link underneath this video in the description box so you could you could check them out as well. So I have reviewed uh, Comme des Garçons during my countdown to Halloween. So don't be surprised if you see me wearing a crazy tape wig. I wore the tape wig uh, and the glue and tape wig to honor this perfume because I was reviewing it in that particular video. So my look actually matches the perfume. And this is the strangest perfume of 2020. It is the one that has given me most huh vibes, most what the vibes, and most oh vibes. <laughs> so it's strange. It gives you everything. And even the bottle itself is designed in a way that it cannot stand up right. Oh, look at my face. You can see me. There I am. It's strange in any way. It's 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 a bizarre one. Look at that. It's like an episode. We're in an episode of the Twilight Zone. And this is how Comme des Garçons tape feels like. Uh, the bottle is a reject. That's the whole concept of like loving something that's rejected. I love that concept. That means also loving people even though they're not perfect because nobody's perfect. Embracing your scars, seeing them as something beautiful, just embracing the imperfection. So as the strangest, reject, but love of my life, because it's top 10 of 2020, is Comte de Gasson's tape. There you have it. 
It's a highly conceptual perfume. I don't wear it often. I sniff it out of the bottle a lot though because the hawthorn sticks to you and it kind of has this tendency of sticking to you for a long period of time and it gets a bit obnoxious to me. This is one of the big reasons why I don't like beige from Chanel because it's all about hawthorn. But anyway, more about beige in another video, maybe. So that was one of them as well. That was number three, right? But without any particular order. Now the next one is the best reformulated, um, not that the perfume has been reformulated in 2020, but it's the best reformulation of a fragrance in general. The best reformulation that I have smelled in 2020. And that is Lulu. Lulu, here is the reformulated Lulu, and this is the original formula of Lulu from the 80s. This is a 2019 bottle, 2018-19 bottle. I love it so much. I have to still review. This one hasn't been reviewed as of yet, but by the time you watch this video in the future, maybe the review will be out on this one. The reformulation is so good that I prefer it to the original. The original is like the smaller sister of poison with that overdose of plum on top of tuberose. And the new formulation is like an homage to the 80s. It's so delicious without that plum, but it's really, really good. I love it so much. And it still lasts, it's still powerful, it still lasts a long time. I know L'Oréal, you know, they, they are in charge of Cacharel. L'Oréal uh, probably, you know, wanted to save some money, change the ingredients. But in this case, they did a great, L'Oréal, you did a great job here because you made something cheaper. This is considered a cheapie nowadays, uh, but uh, because it does sell for not much money. But it's wonderful, and it, it's so much different from all the expensive new releases out there from the mass market of perfumes. And this one is just so different and powerful and beautiful and very 80s. And I love the bottle also that reminds me of a Star Wars spaceship. It's like, you know, look at that. I love this bottle, some of the spray bottle. I'm not a big fan of that genie bottle of the splash. Contrary to popular belief, I've said this in other videos, but I'll repeat it here. Um, people think that the genie bottle came first and then this one came later. No, they were both released in the same time. The genie bottle was the splash and this was the spray. They both came out the same time. It's just that the spray did not get as much attention as the genie bottle, uh, the splash bottle, but I love this 80s vessel looking starship could be Tron, could be Star Wars, loving this. So this was uh, this was on my list as the best reformulated scent of 2020, but also considered, I guess, the best cheapy as well, if you may. That's Lulu. Okay, moving on. I'm going to say this is the best fragrance. Hmm... <laughs> Conceptually speaking, now I know we don't like to go into this, oh, it smells like grandma, and it doesn't. But if we're going to go into the perfumes that have that reputation of being the granny perfume, but this one wins in terms of having that reputation, but proving that reputation wrong. So this one wins as a the granny reputation perfume that proves its reputation wrong, meaning it's not at all a granny smelling perfume. And that would be Aromatics Elixir. Aromatics Elixir is, is that perfume. It, and, I've, and I'm using it a lot. And um, it came out in the 70s. It's a Shepra. It's very musky. It's very animalic. It, it's quite intense. It's a heavy hitter. It goes down through different phases of dry downs. It changes every time you put it on your skin. It's made in Switzerland, not in France. <laughs> Somebody, when I mentioned it in my other live stream, was like, Ricola, you know, they, those candies, they're also made in Switzerland. Yeah, it has a little bit of that candy type of, like for the throat, like a healthy herbal healthy herbal medicinal type of smell. It's delicious, by the way. So in the 70s, it was created as something you use 
it's an elixir. It's aromatherapy. And you're supposed to layer it with other perfumes. But it's so heavy that you can actually wear it on its own. I did, however, layer it with other perfumes. And in fact, if you go back to look at my, I think it was my top of the um, top 10 perfumes for the month of um, November, you could see this one and how I layer it with other perfumes. So this is a wonderful one that to me smells actually really modern because uh, it's an interpretation of Shepra that is not perhaps a modern interpretation of Shepra, but the way that um, it smells in 2020 is modern. It's it's like a it's like a refreshing, healthy smell. For you know, God knows in 2020 we love to hear health because it's the opposite of what's going down in the world right now. So this one offers that fresh, healthy approach to the aroma of scents. So it's delicious. So this is on my list, you guys as the perfume of 2020 that has um, debunked its standard of being called a granny perfume, which it is not. So there you have it. Okay, that one's done. The next one... Oh, let me see. Let me see. Okay, the next one is the best release of 2020. And I guess that's easy for y'all to guess. The best release for 2020 for me is Lelion de Chanel. You could check out the review of Lillian de Chanel in the card section up above, but also in the description box down below. I have reviewed this one. You can also check out the video, uh, the unboxing of Lillian de Chanel, and also my first impressions of Lillian de Chanel. So there's three dedicated videos to this perfume. This, to me, is the best release in 2020. It's masterfully blended, masterfully composed. The ingredients are perfect. Everything is dosed just right. It smells of future. It smells of past. It smells of the present. It fell, It falls like a bomb in 2020, and we needed something powerful in 2020 to take our minds off of everything else going down politically, economically, and health-wise in the world. This is the best, really. Hands down, the best release of 2020. Lillian de Chanel. If you want to know more, I said so much about this one. If you want to know more, as I said, there's three videos on my channel dedicated just to this little baby here. That was the best release of 2020, you guys. Right, let's cross it off the list. Now, my, the best perfume for reminiscing of 2020. And this, this one has a very sentimental, emotional value for me. A little thing is falling, is moving around the little necklace here. A little good, good, uh, good luck, fortune, scarab, Egyptian, ancient Egyptian scarab here. This is the twenty. This is the fragrance of twenty twenty that ha I have an, em an emotional connection to. Uh, it's Giorgio Beverly Hills. Giorgio Beverly Hills, which was released in nineteen eighty one. Um, you know, mm, I. It's, it's hard because, I mean, okay, so this one is very, this is my mom's, one of my mom's favorite perfumes or my mom's favorite perfume. And um, since I don't get to see her much this year, obviously, because we got to, you know, keep her safe. And when I do have a gig or a job, I lost all of them, by the way. This year has been really terrible. But s some last minute did come through. But we're not, we're talking 90% of them are, haven't come through. Anyway, so... I gotta, you know, keep her safe so we don't see each other. But this smells of my mom, you see. So the My Reminiscing perfume is Giorgio. So, of course, Giorgio was going to be in my top 10 uh, fragrances for 2020 because I smell it and mom is there with me. And, and I love the way it smells. This artificial beast from the 80s has been toned down a little bit in, in modern times. Uh, I do not recommend you to purchase the current formulation, which is made in Spain. That's terrible. This one is made in the US. I do have also a made in UK and a made in France version. They're all three are amazing. Just the made in Spain is dreadful. Anyway, the tuberose in here, the gardenia in here, the, well, we don't have a musk in here anymore, but the synthetic version of the musk in here, the, the opulence, it's not such a heavy puncher as, as it used to be in the 80s, hence being forbidden to be worn, like you couldn't enter certain restaurants if you were wearing Giorgio Beverly Hills back in the day. It's been toned down, but toning down did it a world of good. It's so masterful, beautiful, clean. 
it's just a majestic fragrance. I, I think this is the best the 80s, this is kind of the symbol of the 80s. It arrived into the 80s in 1981 and then it, it marked the 80s for, for a whole decade. And now it's considered a cheapie. Uh, I still haven't reviewed this one. I'm waiting for the right time. This one is going to be a big, long review. So, but by the time you're watching this video, I might have reviewed it by then, but who knows? Anyway, um, it's, it's, a, it's a big one. It's a big perfume. It deserves a big review and it deserves also a lot of respect. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I think a lot of people don't understand it. Uh, this one is... This one tells a story, you guys. Of hope, of positive vibes, of energy, of being happy, being bubbly. It's it's just amazing. It's such an energy booster. Just having it at home, maybe you don't like to wear it on your skin, but just smelling it out of the bottle, out of the nozzle alone, it's amazing already. Just this is enough. You smell it and, and you're happy. Oh, my nose is too full. Okay, so there's that. That's Giorgio Beverly Hills, the best reminiscing perfume for 2020. Now, um... Oh, this is kind of a little sad. Not not sad in a sad way, but this is the last perfume I bought before the official announcement of the lockdown and you know the whole thing that shall remain unnamed, like Voldemort on on YouTube. Um, so what did I write here? Um, the last best perfume bought right as the. Uh, was beginning, so before it began, but just as it was going to be announced. Symbolic of the end of something and the beginning of something new and the beginning of something dangerous. And that is Grande Poudre. I literally purchased this a day before shops shut down. <laughs> this was, that was that purchase. This little green, delicate light green sage um, and violet accord. And I smell it, and you know, for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life, I will associate this smell with with 2020, with what is happening in 2020, with, you know, the virus and all. This to me smells of that, because this one was purchased right as it all began, as the fear kicked in, as the news were bombarding you with it, as everything is going to change, the shutdown, the lockdown, losing jobs, all of that while I was wearing this. This one will, for the rest of my life, when I smell it, it smells of March, <laughs> of the shutdown, of the beginning of this dangerous new era. That's the smell of it. This one, for me. So, it is in my top 10 of 2020, but for a very weird reason. It's the smell, it's the last perfume I bought in the old world. And it's the first smell, the first new smell I smelled in the new dangerous world. So this one has a very special place. And... Um, yeah, Quentin Biche is the nose behind this one. This is an Yves Saint Laurent fragrance for their Le Vestia de Parfum range. It's their kind of niche, les exclusives fragrances uh, from Yves Saint Laurent. And it is a majestic, it also has a lot of musk in it. It is, a, it is a majestic fragrance. To me, it's the best of their lineup. I've smelled all of them. And I wanted to purchase others, but every time I just, I'm like, no, this is the one for me. So Quentin did a wonderful job. Quentin, if you're watching, because he did watch the review of this one. He actually, Quentin, actually, we had a short exchange on, on Insta. Um, he was uh, very thankful for the review, and I thought that's so humble of him. So thank you so much, Quentin, for, for that. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope to have you one day, Quentin, on this channel and, like, maybe interview you and talk to you about your wonderful perfumes and creations. So that's that. This is in my top 10 for 2020. Moving on... So that was that. The next one, oh, we're almost through, you guys. I got one, oh, I got only two left. Okay. Of course, my top 10 had to be, I went through, I don't know how many bottles of this this year. Chanel, pour monsieur. This is, I think, bottle number three already this year. I went through three bottles of this. Or is it bottle number four? No, it's bottle number four, because I also go through the aftershave lotion. I use it as a body spray. Okay, what can I tell you about this one? I have made, I don't know, 10 videos on my channel about this one, reviewed it, reviewed it, made unboxings. Every time I unbox a new one, I make a little video dedicated to it. Like, I'm not going to bore you again with Pomosio, but I'm going to tell you just this thing. 
This one smells different every time I use it. It grows on you. In the beginning, you won't understand its beauty. At the beginning, you're just going to smell this kind of fresh, lemony, bergamotty thing. But there's depth in this sheeper. There's labdanum hiding in here. Delicate, delicate labdanum. Oak moss, oak moss, oak moss. One of the rare. There's only two Chanel perfumes that still have oak moss listed in their ingredients on the, on the back of the box. This is one of them. This is one of them. And it's... The more you wear, the more you discover the facets, and they keep coming, they keep coming. The latest facet I've discovered, this is something that I haven't mentioned in any video yet, I'm going to say it here now. In its dry down, after wearing it so many years, I fi it finally kind of, it's a very shy one, but it opened up a different secret little drawer that was locked until now. It opened it up to me, and it gave me that nuance, that extra nuance I didn't notice before, and that is... That cardamom, that uh, basil mixed with the other spices, mis mixed with the ginger, uh, it it gives you, in the dry down sometimes, a chai tea or a chai latte taste, flavor, smell, and it's delicious. Almost like imbued in honey. What can I tell you? The love of my life. Uh, Pour Monsieur by Chanel. Of course it had to be in my top ten. Actually, it would have been the last one I wanted to talk to you about, but it ain't gonna be because the last one is gonna be, well, there's a reason why the last one, because I think this is it now, right? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Now we're getting to number 10. Number 10, <clears throat> the best vintage of 2020 in the most vintage respect of the term when perfumes used to be perfumes. You know what I mean? When perfumes were there. Just notice my hair. We are live streaming, you guys, so I just noticed my hair. It kind of needs to be fluffed up a bit. <laughs> Obsession by Calvin Klein. Obsession by Calvin Klein is the 10th on this list. Random order, you guys. Doesn't mean that it's the best or the worst. It's the best vintage, and it's a pretty decent reformulation by Coty. Coty did you good, Obsession. Coty did not do you dirty. This is a really good one. I love Obsession. I mean, I love Obsession. <laughs> this one hit me in 2020 like nothing else. This one, literally from the moment I, I, I thought to myself, oh, yeah, let's just buy a bottle. I found it really cheap on Amazon. Um, you know, I was like, ah, Coty, I don't know. Well, let's go for it. It knocked me off my feet, just like the vintage version. That warmth, that musky, ambery warmth, just like the color of the liquid. It goes there. It goes into that color and the smell of it. It's, it's Orient, but it's also Western. It's it's Eastern, it's Southern, it's Northern, it's everything. It's like, it's like the whole world comes together in, into this and it's a breezy, gorgeous scent of sands and dunes and beautiful weather and salt on your skin because you've been swimming in the ocean and it's dried on your skin and somebody kisses you or you kiss somebody who's been in the ocean and you taste on your tongue that saltiness mixed with the warm rays of sun and the essential oils of the skin of that person imbued together. It's like everything. This is sunshine and hope of warmth in a bottle. And this, I needed it to boost my mood in 2020. God knows I needed my boosts. <laughs> Perfume saved my life in 2020. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. They've kept me sane. They have kept me stable. And they are my best friends. They have been, they've been talking to me. They've been telling me stories. They've been, um, you know, telling me poems. Every fragrance is another history, it's another life, it's another story to tell and to be heard. And Obsession uh, obsessively kept me happy. Definitely. So there you have it guys. This, these would be my top 10 perfumes for 2020. I'm gonna go into the chats quickly here before we finish the video and uh, let's see if you guys have any favorites as well. So I have been thinking um, Heidelberger says, who else is addicted to Bel Respiro? I cannot live without it. Best scent ever created, in my opinion. I love Bel Respiro too. Um, hair is a mess. Sorry, you guys. Whatever. It is what it is. Um, 
Heidelberg about Bel Respiro. So it's difficult to describe. It's kind of a grassy fragrance, like a breeze on a spring morning. Not citrusy, not muddy, simply to die for. Go and check it out, and you will see what I mean. And you can also check out my review of Bel Respiro. I have reviewed the fragrance on my YouTube channel. Uh... Robert asks, Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum? I recommend the Eau de Toilette. I'm not a fan of Eau de Parfum. Jordi Popelaz, hello Jordi. Jacob, I'm so happy to catch your live for once. I was just about to head off to bed, but thought I'd say hi from Belgium. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello Jordi and good night. Heidelberg, I am, and I'm extremely selective when it comes to fragrances. Paul Hegarty, hi Paul, how are you doing? Do your eyes, sweetie? What do you mean? What does that mean, Paul? Do your eyes. I did my eyes. Um, both. I own the 200... Ah, okay, you have both. Oh, uh, Bel Espiros. MK says, I used to wear the Voile de Parfum version of Lulu as a kid. Ah, Voile de Parfum, that's the one without alcohol. Um, in the early 90s. It was like a milky and alcohol-free perfume. I did prefer it to the actual Eau de Parfum. When I first smelled it years back, it was like, oh my god, I'm in heaven for the Bel Respiro. Paul says, honestly, okay, uh, Paul, I think you're in a really bad mood today. <laughs> Just, let's, let's, uh, you're actually really always nice in the comment section. Such a pity to read this from you. Uh, Daniel says, I love Lulu. I wonder, though, whether I would love it if I had not heard reviews by you and see me before I tried it. Not sure. You opened my uh, mind to it. Yeah, Lulu is amazing. Robert says, I really like grandma perfumes. Um, <laughs> well, grandma under, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, me too, definitely. Debbie says, Aromatics Elixir and Le Lyon are on my 2021 checkout list. Yes, girl. Uh, George says, uh, yes, Robert. <laughs> uh, Robert sends a perfume bottle and a heart. That's what you get if you, those are the emojis, special emojis that you get if you become a member of my channel. If you join, you get to use exclusive emojis. So thank you, Robert. Um, Jack says, I'm definitely going to buy Carnal Flower in the early months of 2021. It's a good one. You will not regret it. Cardmaster, detox is the key word. Detox is really the key, key word. You're right about that. Um, I... <laughs> Caleb, uh, that is so sweet. Glad you have this to feel close to your mom during 2020. Year from hell. Yeah, we're talking about Georgia Beverly Hills. I feel like so many fragrances are toned down now. Yes, Karen Master, they make, a, they make them super expensive too and toned down at the same time. Mm. <sighs> yes, Paul, I have a Michael Jackson thing going on. Mm-hmm late years. Um, Daniel, dying does not worry me mm, beyond a certain point. The thing about this health catastrophe which worries me is the prospect of an um, emaciated survival. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, you survive as you survive, meaning even if you're in a car accident and uh, heaven forbid, Huh? It would never happens to anybody. Hope it never happens to anybody. But then hope it also never happens to anybody that one remains paraplegic. You live. You keep living with whatever you have left. That's in our nature. We are survivors. And we just keep living until there's no life left. No matter what life throws at us, we keep living. Um, Cardmaster. Uh, cardamom is one of my favorite notes. That's why I love Voyage and Vodka on the Rocks. Debbie says, I guess 9 out of 10. Do I win a prize, LOL? <laughs> well, let's think about it. Maybe. <laughs> Salty kisses are a vibe, Cardmaster says. George says, beautiful. Robert says, can't find obsession in stores. Should test it first. It does not seem really popular. Enough. No, it's not, it's not popular at all. And it's in that mid-cheap range in terms of prices. Um, yeah. Time to musk up. Jacob, can you return Chanel beauty items from online to Chanel boutique? Thank you. Oh, I don't, I do not know. I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure. You might have to call the boutique and ask them. 
Andrew says, oh my god, the tragedy of the election is overturned by the quack court. Oh, Andrew, no, 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 let's hope not. Let's hope not. Heidelberger, have you ever tried anything from Maître Parfumeur uh, at uh, Gantier? No, I have not. Andrew Jacobs here, and that shine is fire. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Andrew. Konstantinos uh, Papadakis, hey, how you doing, sweetie? Hi there from Bulgaria, although Greek. Yeah, your name is very Greek. Your opinion on Armani Code Cashmere, Mistio, Eau de Parfum de Toilette before the formulation of 2017? I really don't have an opinion on them. I'm not an Armani fan. Mistio, they butchered it. And they keep butchering it. <laughs> Maximo, how often do you use number five? At least twice a month. And in December, every other day. Andrew says, Carnal Flower is fire. All right. All right, guys. So let's end it here. Yes, Colonel Flower is fire. On the fire note, I wish you all a wonderful, you know, end of this year, beginning of next year, and all the years to come, depending on when you're watching this video, because we, you might be watching it in 2030. In that case, I wish you the best of 2030s ever. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you have, and uh, tell me what your top 10 perfumes for the, the year of 2020 are in the comment section down below. I would love to read them. And become a member of my YouTube channel if you wish to get special perks like emojis and uh, exclusive videos, as well as Patreon on Patreon, Super Deco all spelled together. And don't forget my other Instagram profiles. One is Super Deco, the other one is Coco Chanel is in my house, and the third one is Coco Chanel Privé. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.